Welcome to the Sunday Experience Online. How good is that we can come together online on Sundays from all over Berlin and beyond. How cool. This week, we would love to see you at Sisterhood and Breakfast Club on Thursday. Breakfast Club is a fantastic place for all the guys to encourage each other and talk life and leadership. And Sisterhood is where the women get together and get fired up to add value to the world around us. I love it and I love being a part of it. If you'd like to know more, you can DM Hillsong Berlin on Instagram or write in the chat. It's really the best way to start the day. And how good was Heart and Soul Night last Thursday? We heard about vision and where we're going as a church. The best thing is we're moving forward as a community because this year is all about Holy Spirit action. And you know what? In two weeks time, save the date for the 14th of February, we're going to have Vision Sunday with Senior Pastor Brian Houston. It is always a special Sunday, framing the year for us as a global Hillsong Church. So you do not want to miss it. And right now, we're going to head into some amazing worship. We'll hear from the wonderful Pastor Joyce preaching a powerful message. So let's get ready. Take it away, guys. In Matthew 18, in the message translation, it says, when two of you get together on anything at all on earth and make a prayer of it, my Father in heaven goes into action. And when two or three of you are gathered together because of me, you can be sure that I'll be there. So let's worship together. Go for it, Mike. Fill this house with your spirit. Mark these walls with your peace. As we gather two or three,
Big warm welcome. Yes, welcome everyone. Yeah, either you're at home, by yourself, with a friend, with family, or joining us the first time today, we love having you with us. And we were just singing, he can move the mountains and yep. he makes a way where there's no way. And I love that, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how the week has been, you know, it has been perhaps blurry for you, you know, some challenges, you know, coming your way. But you know what, he can make a way. And this is the start of a brand new week. And he is faithful. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. And yes, I love that amen. we can stand really on that promise. So we're going to pray for our next generation, for community groups, um, for those affected by the floods in Mozambique, for protection for people protesting in Russia, um, healing from COVID for a family and also healing from, from a surgery on the shoulder, freedom from addiction. And we're going to pray for our community um, in Warsaw Connect and Prague Connect. Yes. By the way, um, big welcome to Danny and Mac who are joining us and yes, linking so in from Warsaw <laughs> and everyone else. So let's pray together with faith. Yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you're here with us today. Holy Spirit, we welcome you at every single home, Father, at this moment, God. So we thank you that you're with us. We put every single request into your hand, Lord. We thank you that you're with us. You stand with us. You make a way, God. I thank you, Father, that we can look into this future and knowing we are positioned in your love and your protection and your provision. So we thank you, Lord, and we come to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And I have some praise for reports in my hand, which is awesome. When, when I read through them, it's really so encouraging. I can't help myself, but really it stirs up thankfulness within me. So I just want to uh, read them out to you. Um, someone is thankful for a healthy newborn baby, which is amazing. Uh, people are thanking God for provision, for healing, and new job opportunities. People are thankful for uh, business breakthroughs. Amen. Uh, a successful master thesis. Um, someone is thankful for a great heart and soul night. That's great. As uh, someone started a new community group last week, that's awesome. And above all, we thank God for people making decisions to say yes to Jesus last week. So good. And if you have a praise report, share them with us. You know, it's super easy, but very encouraging to hear that. Yeah. 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 And I want to take this moment really to encourage all of us with our giving because I believe. Our giving is part of our praise. And there's a scripture that I want to read out to you. It's in Psalm 40, verse 3, where it says, um, He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what He has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. For me personally, it has been a journey to understand that um, my giving is part of my praise. And I believe we all can relate to it, that uh, sometimes we don't feel like praising. Um, and Tini and I, we made the decision that no matter what the situation is, we want to praise God in all our circumstances. In the scripture that I just read out, it says, um, He has given us or has given me, you and me, a new song to sing. Um, but I also realize, and we're experiencing it from time to time, that it's really up to us to sing it, even if we don't feel like it, that we still make a decision to say, no matter what, we're going to worship you, Jesus. And our emotions are real, yeah, uh, but our relationship with God, it's not based on our emotions. Actually, when I look at our, our daughter, she's a little toddler now, I can see it, like emotions come and go. Yeah, they're coming in, in seconds, like it's happening from one moment to the next. So. <laughs> yeah, but our relationship is, is it got to be based on trust. You know, trust is the consistency in it. And I really want to encourage you when it comes to our giving to also see it as uh, trusting our Heavenly Father, you know, really seeing it as a fruit of knowing Him. The scripture says, Look at him, what he has done, and be amazed, you know? And knowing Jesus produces this fruit called trust. And I want to encourage you to really praise him and to honor him and to really see him for who he is, for what he has done. Because all he has done is all about what, uh, who he is to us, you know? So I want to encourage you to give and to praise Jesus. Yeah, awesome. And the way we're doing it is like we put up a standing order. So it's yeah. the first thing that is going out every month. And But there are different other ways, like you can do it via the website, the giving app. So I love yeah. it. It's easy. Great. <laughs> 
And now I'm really excited um, because our pastor Joyce is bringing the word. So let's get ready. Um, get your notebook out, uh, your phone, and let's be expecting what she's going to bring today. Take one. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Oh, thank you. Happy birthday to oh. you. Happy birthday to you for yesterday. Thank you. Hey, thank you, thank you, you little tinkers. Love <laughs> I love you too. I love you all too. I love you too. Thank you. Oh, they're beautiful. I do love flowers. Well, that was a lovely surprise. So thank you very much, everybody, for celebrating my birthday. I'm nearer 60 than I am 50 now. <laughs> Should I tell everybody that? I don't know. In any case, hello, everyone. It's great to be with you. And I am excited about having the opportunity to bring a message to you on Holy Spirit action. These guys have just surprised me with their actions, and um, I'm praying that I'm going to be able to bring you some truth and God's wisdom on Holy Spirit action to you today. And you know, that is the theme that is framing us locally as a church here in Berlin. And you know, I'm praying that you will continue to be strengthened as we come around God's Word today with these beautiful flowers standing next to me. So at the beginning of the year, every year for many, many years, we as a family take time to write down our goals. And initially when the kids were younger, we would sit with big sheets of paper, write our goals down. We would read them to each other. And then we took it to a whole nother level and started to squeeze liquid out of tea bags to stain the paper and make it look old. And then we'd roll them up, seal them with candle wax, put them in a box and pretend when we brought them out a year later that we had discovered some long lost forgotten scrolls. <laughs> Hilarious, I know, but um, we don't actually do it that way anymore now that our kids are young adults, but it was fun and we enjoyed doing it that way. But in any case, we would then proceed to read the old goals before setting off and writing new goals. There would be lots of laughter at the things we didn't achieve and to be honest, even the things we'd forgotten we'd even written down. For us, it was a sweet transition. But over time, we knew that if we were going to reach the goals we were setting and not fall off our chairs with hysterical laughter, we needed to keep the goals we had made before us. We needed to read them, keep them before our eyes and remind ourselves of them. And you know what? It made such a difference because as we got proactive about moving forward towards our goals, we actually started to see progress. And we start, these goals started to become a reality in our lives. And the reason I'm just sharing this little Wilkinson tradition with you at the moment is because I believe we can take this into account when it comes to Sundays. For sure, hearing a message that has been prepared for us is fantastic. But taking time throughout the week to read and meditate on the scriptures that have been shared, well, that is what's going to help create an environment for the Holy Spirit to continue to speak and reveal truth to us. And in recent weeks, much has been shared on the Holy Spirit. And I really want to encourage you to avail yourselves of the study notes that are online. Seriously, there is so much treasure in the scriptures and the thoughts that have been brought to the table so far. And basically, if you and I want to grow, it's going to take a proactive approach on our behalf. I personally find these study notes super helpful and a great resource that I actually go to and it really helps me. And honestly, anything that helps us can only be a good thing, hey? So right now for today with Holy Spirit action, I'm not sure what comes to mind when you think of the word action, whether it's an action movie, people jumping off buildings and saving lives and dodging all sorts of danger, you know, the kind of movies that my husband loves to watch or whether it's being in the office here right now when Daniel comes and he gets this little slate and he clips, I mean, oh, take one. But sometimes it's take one, 101, and it's like exaggeration. But sometimes we have a lot of takes. And then he goes, action. But basically the word action means the process of doing something in order to make something happen. 
And I, for one, I'm expecting the Holy Spirit to do something in our lives today. You know, we've welcomed Him here before we started filming. And already online, we have sang, Come Holy Spirit, we are desperate for Your presence. Come Holy Spirit, we are desperate for You, Lord. And you know, when we honour and welcome the Holy Spirit, we give Him an opportunity to act on our behalf. He's part of the Trinity. He's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And He is the one Jesus spoke about in John 14, when He said He would not leave us as orphans. He would not leave us alone, but He would send us the Helper. Jesus said of the Holy Spirit in verse 16, And I will ask the Father and He will give you another Helper comforter, advocate, intercessor, counsellor, strengthener, standby, to be with you forever. The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive and take to its heart because it does not see Him or know Him. But you know Him because the Holy Spirit remains with you continually and will be in you. And how reassuring is it to know that we have this person with all these wonderful life-giving attributes with us and in us. It really is incredible. And I don't think we really have tapped into all that that means. You know, the Holy Spirit, He was always on standby. He's waiting to move on behalf of God and His children, on behalf of you and I. And this is what He does. And it's what He's been doing since the beginning of time. You know, we see Him being active in the Old Testament and the New Testament throughout Jesus' life on earth as well. He was active and He's still standing by ready to be active today. So let's just have a wee look at Genesis 1, the very beginning. Genesis 1 verses 1 to 2. In the beginning, when God created the universe, the earth was formless and desolate. The raging ocean that covered everything was engulfed in total darkness. And the Spirit of God was moving over the water. Isn't it beautiful to know that the Spirit of God was moving over the water? He was there waiting. He was waiting and ready to act on behalf of God's words. And when God said, let there be light, there was light. And we can see as we continue reading throughout Genesis 1, the miraculous unfolding of creation, including the creation of humanity, the beginnings of you and I. You know, the Holy Spirit, He acted on the Word of God and He brought order to chaos and light where there was darkness. He is a master of doing just that, shedding light on the dark areas of our lives so that we through His kindness, His goodness and His grace can be made whole. And then in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit was evident in Jesus' life from Mary's conception to when He ascended back into heaven. Matthew 1 verses 18 tells us that this is how Jesus, the Messiah, was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. She was so humble. You know, I'm not sure every young lady would have been putting their hands up saying, pick me, pick me, because there were a lot of unknowns ahead for Mary. But in verse 38, we see Mary respond and she said, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And as a result of her surrendered, obedient life, Jesus was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. And then in Matthew, Matthew 3, verses 13 to 16, we see Jesus being water baptised. And again, another example of obedience and surrender. You know, if water baptism, which is an act of going public with our faith, was important enough for Jesus to do it, and He is our greatest example, then it's also important for us today. And so I just want to say, if you're listening and you have not yet been water baptised, can I just encourage you to consider finding out more? We would really be happy to come alongside you as you discover the importance and the significance of being water baptised. But for now, let's just pick it up at verse 13. Then Jesus left Galilee to come to the Jordan to be baptised by John. But when he waded into the water, John resisted him saying, why are you doing this? I'm the one who needs to be baptized by you. And yet you come to be baptized by me. 
Jesus replied, it is only right to do all that God requires. Then John baptized Jesus. And as Jesus rose up out of the water, the heavenly realm opened up over him and he saw the Holy Spirit descend out of the heavens and rest upon him in the form of a dove. You know, from this act of obedience and surrender, doing what God required, the Holy Spirit moved, descending like a dove from heaven and alighting on Jesus. And from then on, the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the season of His life that He had been called and He had been born to fulfill. Ultimately, dying on the cross for your sins, for my sins, conquering hell, death and the grave, again by the power of the Holy Spirit. And all of that so that you and I could come into a relationship with God as our Heavenly Father. So we can see clearly that from the beginning to the end of Jesus' time here on earth, the Holy Spirit was in partnership with Him. If Jesus, who was 100% man, 100% God, relied on and needed the Holy Spirit, you can be sure that you and I need Him too. And we do. And this is why Jesus' last words to His disciples before He ascended into heaven were about the Holy Spirit. In Acts 1, we read in verses 4, 5 and 8, and that's what I'm going to read now in the Amplified Version. It says, While being together and eating with them, He commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, of which He said, You have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized and empowered and united with the Holy Spirit not long from now. Verse 8 says, You will receive power and ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses to tell people about me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the ends of the earth. Not only are these Jesus' last words, and last words are important, but these last words were given to people who had lived and walked with Jesus. They had seen Him do all manner of miraculous things, including being raised from the dead Himself, and they had just spent the last 40 days with Him, hearing more about the Kingdom of God. And so I find it really interesting that Jesus still said to them, wait. They were still under strict instructions not to go ahead or go anywhere without receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit because they would not be able to rely only on what they had seen or heard while Jesus was with them. They would need to have the Holy Spirit in a fresh way in their own personal lives on a daily basis. This is what Jesus was saying. He was saying it then and He's saying it today. We cannot live the life He has called us to live without the ongoing filling, enabling, leading and empowering of the Holy Spirit. We need His involvement. We need the Holy Spirit to be able to do all that God has planned and purposed for us. Just like the disciples in the book of Acts, We need a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit today and every day. We need Him to pour His Spirit out. We need His involvement. He is waiting to be all that we need today. He's waiting to be all that we need in our future if we will just make room for Him in our lives. And I'm so thankful that the disciples listened because when they received the Holy Spirit, the church as we know it was birthed. You know, we sometimes sing a song called Praise the Father, Praise the Son, Praise the Spirit, three in one. And I love this part where, and I sing it with great gusto, you know, I want to burst out into a song here at the office, but I shan't do that, I shall save you all that. But there's this line and it says, then the church of Christ was born and the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of old shall not nil, shall not faint. I just love it, it's such a declaration. You know, in Acts 2, verse 1 to 4, we read the amazing account of when this actually happened. Verse 2 says, When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound came from heaven, like a rushing violent wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. There appeared to them tongues resembling fire, which were being distributed 
among them. And they rested on each one of them as each person received the Holy Spirit and they were all filled, that is diffused throughout their being with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues, different languages as the Spirit was giving them the ability to speak out clearly and appropriately. From this moment, this outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the glorious message of Jesus, Saviour of the world, spread around the world, starting in Jerusalem and continuing to the uttermost parts of the earth. The good news, the gospel spread and salvation came to people because of the Holy Spirit. You know, we read in John 3 verses 3 to 5, a a conversation Jesus had with Nicodemus where Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say to you, you must be born again. You know, the enabling of the Holy Spirit is just as powerful today as it was back on the day of Pentecost. We can have a year of Holy Spirit action. I believe that with all my heart, a year that moves our lives and everything we are part of, including our church forward. A Spirit-led life is not a weird life. It is a useful life a useful life to those around you, to our society, to our church. We are here to be useful. You know, it's called the book of Acts for a reason. There was a whole lot of Holy Spirit action going on. And the Holy Spirit is just as eager to move on our behalf today. He's waiting to lead and guide us into all that God has planned and purposed for us to be and do. But ultimately it's down to us, are we hungry and thirsty for Him to be a part of our lives. Because if we are, I can guarantee you, He is promised that He will come. Isaiah 44, 3 says, For I will pour out water on Him who is thirsty. And in Scripture, when we see water, it's symbolic of the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, verse 5 says, Those who live according to the flesh without, and when we see the flesh, that means without the Holy Spirit, have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. I think most of us are familiar with setting an alarm clock. It's something we need to do in order to make sure we get up when we need to, or in my case, remind me of the things I need to do, the appointments I need, et cetera, et cetera. And I tend to put my alarm alarm clock on for everything. And so it's church bells. And so in our house, there's constantly church bells going off. And it's my phone. I think the sound is really lovely, but it drives my family crazy when it goes off every hour or so. But in keeping, it's keeping me on track. So, you know, they're just having to put up with it, bless them. (laughs) In any case, just like setting an alarm clock, you and I can set our minds on the Holy Spirit and create an environment for Him to act on our behalf. Be it in our relationship with God and other, or other people, or whether it's about our identity, our finances, or the part we can play in building our homes, our workplace, society, and His church, the Holy Spirit, as we set our minds on Him, will speak to us. He will show us and lead us. And so on that note, I just want to share two simple practical things that will enable you and I to do what Romans 8, 5 says, which is to set our minds on what the Holy Spirit desires. And of course, there's loads more, but let me just share these two thoughts with you. The first one is prayer, simple prayer. And simply put, it means communicating with God. And communication isn't only what you and I have to say to Him, it's also what He has to say to us. It's a dialogue. It's a dialogue between you and your Heavenly Father, between me and my Heavenly Father. It's not a monologue. It's not just a wish list. And I want to encourage all of us to view prayer as more than what you need and the concerns you have, which of course are important to Him. But also use it as a time to wait and hear what He has to say to you. I'm not talking about an audible voice. I've never personally heard an audible voice, but I'm talking about spirit to spirit. And rest assured that you can approach your Heavenly Father anytime about anything. Prayer is a safe place for you. Listen to what Romans 8 verse 15 to 16 says. 
And you did not receive the spirit of religious duty, leading you back into the fear of never being good enough. But you have received the spirit of full acceptance and folding you into the family of God. And you will never feel orphaned. For as He rises up within us, our spirits join Him in saying the words of tender affection, Beloved Father. For the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us as He whispers into our innermost being, You are God's beloved child. This is how we can come to God, our Father. So whatever you are facing or dealing with right now, you can come to Him in prayer and He will help you. Philippians 4 verse 6 says, Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when when Christ displaces worry at the centre of your life. And that leads me to the second point, praise, which is also communicating with God. And it's something that we're encouraged to do, even when bringing our worries and concerns to Him, as we've seen in that scripture. And again, simply put, praise is thanking God for what He's doing, what He's done and what He's going to do. It is a powerful spiritual force that creates an environment for the Holy Spirit to move even in the darkest of days and the darkest of times. Romans 1 verse 21 says, For even though they knew God as the Creator, they did not honour Him or give thanks for His wondrous creation. On the contrary, they became worthless in their thinking. They became godless with pointless reasonings and silly speculations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Doing the opposite of praising God, not honouring Him, not thanking Him for what He has, is and going to do, has resulted in the hearts of humanity becoming foolish and dark. Sadly, we have daily proof of that. So it would be fair to say, if unthankfulness leads to darkness, that the opposite, thankfulness and praise, leads to light. Praise turns the lights on. Praise enables His Spirit to lead and guide us into all truth because when His praise comes, His presence comes and His presence brings light. And because He is light, He illuminates our path and He shows us the way we should go. So you don't need a full-on band in your living room to praise God, as exciting and wonderful as that would be. Yes, we've got the online services that you can replay or on, get on your Spotify account and fill it up with full of praise and worship songs. But even without all of that, you and I can cultivate a thankful heart by simply writing a list of all the things you are grateful for. Now, I often do this. I've got a piece of paper stuck with blue tack on my kitchen bench and I write things down that I am thankful for. And you know, this was something that was really key for me when my mother passed away. She passed away last year and we faced difficulties that so many people have faced who've lost loved ones during the pandemic. And But one thing I did from the outset that really helped me was I took a moment every day to thank God for the good things, the good things of the past, the good things of the present, and the good things that He'd promised were in our future. And doing this created precious moments, precious, beautiful moments that I believe that the, it was a time when the Holy Spirit came alongside me and He comforted me and He strengthened me and He put courage into my heart. So as I bring this message to a close today and as we move forward into 2021, I want to encourage you with something I once heard and this is it. One person's prayers are strong but a group of unified people strategically praying purposeful, passionate prayers is a force to be reckoned with. And I believe that is also true of our praise. You and I unified in our purposeful, passionate praise and prayers will create room for Holy Spirit action in the year ahead. In Jesus' Name, Amen.
these walls with your peace as we gather two or three you're welcome here so i just want to take a moment now to invite anybody who is listening to make jesus christ your lord and savior you know whether you've heard the message or whether you have just clicked into this moment right now I believe that it's not by accident. God loves you. Jesus loved you so much that He gave His life for you. He left heaven to come to earth so that you and I could actually come into a loving relationship with God as our Heavenly Father because of the Holy Spirit. And so if that is you today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, I would be honoured if you would pray this prayer with me. And if perhaps you have in the past prayed a prayer, but you have walked away, then today is a day where I want to extend an invitation to you to come home and pray this prayer also. So let's pray together. Jesus, thank you for accepting and loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross. And thank you that you rose again to give me eternal life. Today, I have decided to follow you, Jesus, and accept you as my Lord and Saviour. Thank you for forgiving me of all my sins, past, present and future. From now on, I declare I am loved by God, I am forgiven and I am a child of God. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Joyce. And if you just pray that prayer with us, I would love to congratulate you. What an amazing decision you just made. I really believe this is a life-changing moment. When I decided to follow Jesus, what really helped me was getting planted in a local church and having people in my life that could help me on my faith journey. So we would love to get to know you. You can click the I Have Decided link below to let us know. What a great Sunday so far, and it's not over yet. Every week we have online hangouts where you can get connected and meet new people. So just shoot us a DM on Instagram if you'd like to join. And remember, this Thursday, Sisterhood and Breakfast Club are happening online, so we'll see you on Zoom. Have the best week and stay safe, everyone. Bye!